James Holder for IPL TV in association with Scott's Menswear, in association with Matt Cleese Gym Marbella. I'm at the Box and Burn Gym today in Santa Monica. With me I've got former world champion Wayne McCulloch. How are you doing Wayne? Good to be here. Good, good, good to meet you mate. Thank it you. Really is, it really is. First and foremost, I see you doing a little bit of training today, giving a little bit of your knowledge back. Uh, yeah, I'm just training. The kid I was training with, there he's a amateur fighter, had one fight and just wanted to learn defense. So teach a bit of defense, teach a bit of offense and just the skills that Eddie Fudge taught me and I just pass it on to other people. Indeed. How has Tony Jeffries managed to pull you in uh, to be one of his personal trainers? Because it's a bit of a coup for the gym to get no, you here, isn't it? No, I've known, I've known Tony for a long time and you know, from last year he was asking me to come down here to be a, be a trainer and I thought, well, good opportunity. I was training people in Vegas, been in Vegas 20 years and, and then I came down here in January and, and I love I loved teaching people, people who just want personal trainer or people who want to be a fighter. I can teach both, you know what I mean? Even though, even though you don't want to fight, you can still learn how to fight. And that's what we do here. Tony's a great guy and, and we do that here. From Belfast to Las Vegas. <laughs> Bit of an interesting story, your story. Yeah, well, I came here in February 1993. You know, I came over from my trainer Eddie Fudge in Las Vegas, and then my manager was here as well. So that's the reason why I left Belfast. Back back then, '92, I got the medal, the Olympic silver, and there was no real. The promoters were at the end, and when Frank Warren was on coming on the scene, and and um, Mickey Duff was at the end, and you know there was really nothing happening. Barney Eastwood was at the end, and Very I, transitional period. I had no, I had no real. Yeah, it, it was transitional. I was in the middle of it, so you know I had a few offers back home, but it was really you know and back in England and Ireland, and the offer here was. Nobody knows what the offer is. I know what it is, and it was it was ten times better than any offer I got back home. So I said it was going to be with Eddie Fudge, and how can you turn that down? You know what I mean? And I wanted to stay back home. I was a home bird, but my life just changed, and within that space of a, a few months, from the Olympics to turning pro, and I ended up in America. Do you credit boxing with changing your kind of mindset in your life? To be honest. Yeah, well, as say everybody. When I was on the Olympic team, everybody knew me as the home bird. I couldn't go away for more than a week. I was like, I want to go home, I want to go home. I thought Belfast was the whole world. and I love Belfast, I love it, but then all of a sudden, you know, you get this offer to go to America, and you're like, did I do it? But the offer was for three years, so I'm thinking, three years later, I'm moving back home again. But you get older, you know, my life changed a little bit. My, my wife, Cheryl, was my girlfriend. She came with me, and, and um, she was only 19, I was 22. We knew nobody, and we just... We made a life for ourselves, and we, it was hard work. You know, it was hard work, but you know, the between Betty Fudge was a, you know, how can you turn it down? I mean, that's that's partly the reason why I came to America, and, and Eddie Fudge is the reason why I became world champion. Hall of Fame inductee as well, so again, it's a fantastic achievement from a little lad from Belfast, isn't it? It is. Well, they say Eddie Fudge, you know, he trained for Eddie Roach as when he was a fighter, and mm -hmm. I'm the last guy, last world champion he had. And to pass on the methods that he, you know, he taught me, and and a mixture of what I learned as well. So, you know, so to be in the school of Eddie Fudge boxing is just to, you know, say Freddie Roach is a Hall of Famer, Eddie Fudge is a Hall of Famer, and I know hopefully someday I'll be there as well. Yeah, indeed. Um, we've got a massive fight coming up Saturday. Kel Brook really going to show the world how good he is potentially. Sean Porter again, he's, he's a very tough guy, very game. Could, could be explosive. Could you talk to me how you see this one playing out? Well, Porter's a, he's a slick fighter, you know, but Kelly Brook, he, what's, he's nothing to lose. He's came, here, he's came here thinking, you know, people think he's going to lose anyway, so he's going to come over here and I think he can shock the world, you know what I mean? He's a good fighter, he's solid, and, you know, he can, he can take a punch, he can give a punch, and anything can happen, you know. Porter's not invincible, you know, he's a good slick fighter, but I think Kelly Brook is a strong guy, strong minded as well, and, and he can do anything. Do you think Kel's got the tools to outbox him and do you think that, that ideally would be the game plan to win this one? I don't know if I box him, I think strength wise he might be the stronger guy. You know, Porter's a good good slick boxer and stuff and I think you know Kelbrook's a good boxer too, but I think skill wise, you know, Porter will have the better skills, but but physically I think Calbrook will be stronger and, and you never know, one punch can, can turn a fight around. Indeed, indeed. What kind of atmosphere were we expecting there Saturday night? As you know, it's my first time here. What what can I anticipate? Well, that's, there's a lot of English people here. Yeah. A lot of English, a lot of Irish, a lot of Scots. You know, I remember my first fight here 21 years ago up in Reseda, California, and the English and the Irish and the Scots all turned up for me. So they'll turn up for Kyle as well, you know what I mean? And he may get the better support on Saturday. I think he will, actually. There'll be a lot of support anyway, for sure. Yeah. So there's a massive opportunity for Kel. Oh, what has Defo got to take and grab with both you know, fans? play to him, he's, coming, he's doing it the hard way. You know, I went to Japan and did it the hard way. He's coming to America and doing it the hard way. He's not getting anything set on his... Lap, you know what I mean? He's going to come out here 
and doing everything the hard way and you know hard work pays off and hard work equals success. Just coming back to yourself Wayne, are you going to be looking to train some pro fighters and give some of this knowledge back back to other boxers? Is that I, something that, you, that plays on your mind a little bit? I am, I started, I started training fighters in 2006, I started with Alex Arthur actually from Scotland and then I, I trained about a few Mexican fighters and in Vegas in my gym and, and you know some fighters are not the, the way you think they are. You know, everybody you think it's always going to be the same as you, and they're going to pay you your ten percent. But like, I, I got, I learned the hard way, and I should have contracts with some fighters. And I, you know, one of one of the guys didn't pay me, and and, and I just sort of, I walked away from it for a while. And that's why Tony, when Tony got back and touched me last year, it sort of gave me a little bit of, you know, get me motivated again. Because you get sick, and if you look around, how many ex fighters, world champions, actually get involved? They don't really get involved anymore. And partly to do that, because you think everybody's like yourself, and they're going to pay. They're ten percent to, to the, the trainer, and, but they don't. And as I say, Tony got me stirred up again, and I told him I want to train fighters, and um, hopefully I'll get the right guy coming through here and and training. You never know. I'm training a few young guys, personal training, like twenty-one year olds and big guys as well. And they're all like, I want to fight. I'm like, okay, let's see if we can get there. It just takes time. Yeah, it's a long process. Just can't put the gloves on tonight and fight next week. You got to have hard work, hard work, and then maybe after a year they'll be ready to fight. So yes, I'd like to train. I'd like to train a guy to World Championship, and I, I worked along with Alex till he got the championship. But I didn't. I didn't have him from scratch. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't. I can't put my hand up and say, "Oh, I trained you from scratch." Yeah. But me and Alex are good friends still, and, and, and he became a World Champion. So, I say, I'd love to get somebody from total scratch right through to the, the World Championship, just like Eddie Fudge did with me. He had me from my first fight to my 17th when I won the World Championship, and and he, he had me. You get trainers who work with this guy, work with that guy, then they claim a guy after 20 fights. Eddie had me from the beginning, and I was a champ of the world for him. Well, listen, I look forward to seeing what the future holds for you. As I said, very interesting character, and it's no doubt an interesting life you lead, man. Well, we've got we've got Box and Burn here, and we've got two gyms here, and within three miles of each other. So you I see, know. people love it. You know, the people love the boxing training. They love boxing training. It's different. You know, it's like you don't you don't play boxing, you do boxing. You know, there's no time outs or anything. You just go in there and you do it. And, that's what the people love here. I was fortunate enough to go down and visit the other gym this morning and have a little look around. I said, doing great things, Tony, and the team, aren't they? Yeah, the other gym's a little bit, a little bit snobbier, but you get the locker rooms and showers and you know, <laughs> in, a, in a nice, nice area. The yeah. Brentwood's a, it's a real rich area. But to say, people, if you love to fight and you come into that gym, you're going to learn from. You know, Tony's a, was a fighter. I was a fighter, so you're going to learn from real fighters. And that you're not going to be walking into the gym and somebody, oh, I'm a trainer. I've got a towel on my shoulder and I didn't never fought in my life, never did anything. So you walk into our gym, you get trained by real people. I appreciate that. Listen, I appreciate you giving me a bit of time. Thank you. Thanks so for hopefully being you get a chance to catch up while we're a little bit longer and um, we'll see you probably Saturday for the fight. Okay, well thanks for thanks for having me on here. Top man. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you.